And all right, today is the day we have our friends here with NASA and the Mars 2020 Rover Expedition. Let's now join Mujije Cooper, who is part of this incredible history making event happening today. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. So, OK, tell us first off what is happening today with the arrival and the landing. Yeah, today is the big day. Finally, after seven months of cruise, the spacecraft is going to arrive on Mars and go through the most complicated entry, descent, and landing in history. So we're excited about that. Absolutely. So we've been hearing everybody talk about the seven minutes of terror. Tell us what it's like from your point of view as the crew. Yeah, I mean, there are thousands of things that have to go exactly right. You have to hit the atmosphere at the right angle. You have to deploy the largest supersonic parachute in existence at the right time. Uh, pyros have to fire at the right time. There's just so many things that have to go right. But we're all waiting. The tests have been done, so it's, it's going to happen. <laughs> Here we go. And so I know that there's a time delay of what, like 11 or 12 minutes between That's the right. of us and the rover, and it's only seven minutes to land. So you really don't know what's happening until it's too late, essentially. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we can't have someone there with a joystick controlling it and getting it into the into the march and atmosphere. We have to let it go autonomously. So the command has already been sent. So no matter what, it's going to go through the process. Little robot doing its own thing. Amazing. <laughs> and we've been mm -hmm. hearing that this is Curiosity's twin, basically a similar rover to what we had land back in 2012, but several new upgrades. Let's talk about the instrumentation on board. Yeah, the body looks the same, but there are so many new things. We, we stepped on the shoulders of the Curiosity rover, and there are a lot of science instruments to detect biosignatures, so molecules that will tell us, wow, there used to be life there, yes. um, and all kinds of ground penetrating radars, weather stations. Um, yeah, an upgraded suite. There's going to be so much that we'll, we'll learn from the rover. The weather stations, obviously, I'm a meteorologist. I'm most excited yeah. about that. Also, I wanted to talk a little bit about weather for the landing today. We don't have satellites in orbit there to watch for dust storms or winds. So the rover is just kind of on its own no matter what elements it encounters. Exactly. It's on its own, but the scientists have looked at the weather, at least typically for this particular season. And so far, it's looking good. A good old negative 101 or whatever the temperature is. <laughs> so then let's talk about ingenuity. This isn't just the rover itself. It has a little sidekick. It does. It's a little four pound uh, sidekick that flies with it. It's going to be the first rotorcraft flight ever outside of the planet Earth. Uh, so it's going to be pretty exciting. It'll it'll take pictures and just demonstrate that we can fly a helicopter on Mars. I just absolutely love this. And of course, the rover is also taking core samples, right? That's part of that study for microbial life on this ancient yeah. lake bed. So then the cores are just left there kind of lying on the surface. Yeah, they're in tubes. They're, they kind of look like this. Okay. Uh, they're inside of the tube. They're the size of a piece of chalk, and it's going to lay on the surface of Mars until a fetch rover comes to collect it. OK, so then once it's collected, how do we get it back to Earth? Because I want to see it. I want to hold it. I want to see it right. at the Smithsonian. Like <laughs> yeah, our you'll, you'll have to wait maybe uh, nine, 10 years, but okay. it's going to happen. It's a, a multi-agency effort, not only NASA, but the European Space Agency is also helping out with this endeavor. So it'll be a while, but it's coming. Incredible. Is there any analysis that the rover can do with any samples it collects? Yeah, so um, Pixel and Sherlock are two of the main instruments that are going to look and help us pick the best sample. We're only bringing 43 tubes with us, and out of that, only a, sub a subset can come back. So we have to make sure that we pick the right sample. It has to be the best that we can find. So those instruments are going to help us out. Just incredible. And then let's go into fantasy land. Say we have our first humans there landing on the red planet in several years. I wanted to say a couple years. We're several years away from this. I wasn't alive for the moon landing. You weren't either. What do you think this is going to be like for our generation to watch humans walk on the red planet? Yeah, I mean, it'll just shift our view of how we perceive space and exploration. I mean, just listening to astronauts today gaze upon the blue marble of Earth T to have human eyes on Mars is just going to be incredible. I just I can't wait for that. <laughs> oh, me too. I'm right there with you. Thank you so much for having fun with me. We wish you and your team the best of luck today. We'll all be tuning in quickly. How do people watch from home? Yeah, check it out on the NASA TV or on NASA's YouTube site, youtube.com backslash NASA. Uh, touchdown is going to be 12.55 p.m. on the West Coast. So check it out. Tune in at 11.15 when the show starts. I can't wait. All right. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.